EC3 in Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. What is the latest? What is the update when it comes to EC3 and his contract status with both companies and potentially with some other promotions? Now, there's been a lot of discussion recently about what is really the nature of EC3's deals with Impact Wrestling and with Ring of Honor. We know that he's obviously been appearing on Impact Wrestling television ever since returning to the company at Slammiversary, but we also know that EC3 has taken part and will be appearing on Ring of Honor TV soon as he's been in Baltimore for the Ring of Honor's t television tapings over the last few weeks. Now, according to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, EC3 has an agreement in place with with Ring of Honor in addition to his short-term agreement with Impact Wrestling. Now, what's important to stress here is that neither deal with either promotion is exclusive. ROH did not want to work with Impact Wrestling to get EC3. Both deals allow him to work for the respective companies. Now, this is really important because there have been discussions and rumors about a working agreement between Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. Now, this report would suggest that that's not going to happen. However, with that being said, there will be no creative conflict. It was also added that even though that the Ring of Honor tapings are built around the Pure Title Tournament, EC3 will not be a part of the Pure Title Tournament in Ring of Honor. Now, Ring of Honor, like I said, will be having this Pure Tournament. The TV tapings will focus on the Pure Title and the tournament to crown the Pure Champion. Ten of the 16 entrants at the time had been announced. They included Jay Lethal, Jonathan Grisham, Matt Seidel, David Finlay, Tracy Williams, Josh Woods, Wheeler Utah, Tony Deppen, PJ Black and Rocky Romero. Some other names have since been announced, but none of those names is EC3. Now, EC3, as I mentioned, uh, has been making an impact recently, but he's also going to control his narrative. That's been the whole point of his re-innovation of EC3's character in 2020 is about being controlling your narrative. Ever since he was released by WWE back in April due to the COVID-19 pandemic budget cuts, EC3 had been making a name for himself. He hadn't done many interviews prior to returning to Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary, but he'd done a lot of work on social media promoting this new character that he's had. He changed his look up, started talking about control your narrative, did promo videos on AEW, did promo videos on Ring of Honor, got into a feud on social media with Moose, which has since translated over to Impact Wrestling Television. So it's very, very interesting. And as I mentioned, despite him returning at Slammiversary 2 Impact Wrestling, EC3 will make his first appearance on Ring of Honor program when the content when the content airs, rather, uh, because he's been at these television tapings in Baltimore. Now, EC3 was asked but for confirmation that he was going to be a part of these Ring of Honor tapings, despite multiple reports saying that he was. WrestleZone managed to get a response from him that said, quote, there is more than one narrative to control, end quote. So... Like I said, this isn't, this isn't new news about his work with Ring of Honor, but what is new news is the agreement in place with Ring of Honor in addition to his short-term agreement with Impact Wrestling and the news that neither deal is exclusive. Ring of Honor do not want to work with Impact Wrestling to get EC3. The deal allows for both. Uh, both deals allow for the company, for EC3 to work with respective companies and there will be no creative conflict. Support for Wrestle News 365 is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Now, Manscaped, for all of my UK fans out there, Manscaped just launched in the UK. Over here in the United Kingdom, we have gone for years and years and years without using the right tools for the job. But now you can be one of the first men in England to experience their life-changing product. But it's not just limited to all of the great fans over here in the UK. This offer goes worldwide. So all of my friends over in America and around the world that are listening to this, this offer still does apply for you. You can still use our code. Uh, but I've got to tell you a quick story first. Now, there have been so many times, right? I'm a guy. Uh, you gotta, you got to groom down there, fellas, right? That's the most important thing. you got to keep yourself trimmed. you got to keep yourself proper. And uh, a lot of the time, I've been guilty of this, of using the wrong tools for the job. I've had incidences, I'm not afraid to say it, where things have been nicked, snagged, or in fact cut down there because I wasn't being careful enough and using the right equipment. Now, that just shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. You don't want to be worrying about cutting yourself down there. Do you know how painful that is? I can tell you, it hurts quite a lot. And I wish... And hope to God it never happens to me again and it won't happen to me ever again because I'm using Manscaped products. 
That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team has perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. Big statement, but it's absolutely true. They have just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 in the UK. It's also available around the world as well. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. So those cuts and snags that I was telling you about before are a thing of the past. And let me tell you, when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can get a longer, perfect shave. And not only that, you don't want to be cutting yourself and trimming yourself in the, all over the bathroom, getting hair all over the place. That's just disgusting. The lawnmower has a waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, so no more mess. And one of the coolest features, one of my favorite features about the lawnmower is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming experience. So you can shave longer, you can shave more precisely, and you can shave in the shower. What more do I need to tell you? They've also upgraded to a 7000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology and let's not forget about the charging stand you can show off your mower loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB so if you are listening to me speak right now I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself let's get that bush to tush clean and you can get 20% off and free shipping yeah you heard me right there 20% off and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com. Make your testies their besties. That's 20% off and free shipping. Not only are you getting 20% off, you're getting free shipping as well with the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code 365 wrestle. Your balls will thank you. So it's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now, EC3 made his return to Impact Wrestling in July at the end of Slammiversary uh, via a vignette taping. He's also entered a feud now with Moose on Impact Wrestling Television. He's attacked Moose a couple of times and even stole the TNA World Heavyweight Championship bout at Impact Emergence. Uh, and then this came on top of Ring of Honor announcing that for the first time since stopping doing television tapings and live events in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they are have been returning to producing television in Maryland uh, over the last month or so. They said a quote at the time that said, ROH will adhere to the very stringent protocol as well as the regulation set in place by the Maryland State Athletic Commission. ROH will be instituting the necessary testing and safety measures in a continued effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19. COVID-19, there will be no fans or staff who are not essential to the production at these events. So, so much to break down there from that news and a really interesting thing to discuss and that is the exclusivity of EC3. Where is he actually going to end up next? What do these deals with Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling constitute? What are the details involved in those respective agreements? Now, as I mentioned, EC3 is currently in a TNA World Heavyweight Championship feud with Moose on Impact Wrestling. I think at this point, it's very, very obvious we're going to get the EC3 versus Moose match at Bound for Glory for the Impact, for the TNA, rather, World Heavyweight Championship. At this point of time, we still actually haven't seen EC3 compete in the ring on an Impact Wrestling uh, event or television show, and it's been what, two months now since he returned to the company? I do think that when EC3 faces Moose at Bound for Glory for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, I think that's where the TNA World Heavyweight title program ends, unless they somehow manage to continue it, but I don't think they would continue it with Moose. I think EC3, to me, is going to win that match and end that feud, but I think that could potentially, depending on what the contract and agreement is in place for EC3 and Impact Wrestling, I think potentially it could lead to a unification style storyline between the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and the Impact World Championship. Now, that depends on who is the champion for those respective titles at the time. You could be looking at a scenario where EC3 is the TNA World Heavyweight Champion and Eric Young is the Impact World Champion. But I think Eric Young is going to be facing Rich Swan at Bound for Glory and I could see Rich Swan winning that. Do you then have EC3 versus Rich Swan and try and unify both titles there? I don't know. But the interesting point here, and I think the big creative, the big point about the creative conflict is that there isn't any. There is no creative conflict between Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor. So 
EC3 in Ring of Honor, ROH, will not be related to EC3 in Impact Wrestling, it looks like. So that means the chances of EC3 showing up in Ring of Honor with the TNA World Heavyweight Championship look very unlikely. Not impossible, of course, anything can happen, and maybe they want to use that as some form of an Easter egg for Impact Wrestling, but it's unlikely that anything involved with EC3 and Impact Wrestling will be showing up on Ring of Honor television. So this also means that the rumors about a working relationship with Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor, that's just not the case. There's no base to those rumors. It means we won't see a mass amount of Impact Wrestling stars go to Ring of Honor. It means also we won't see a mass amount of Ring of Honor wrestlers uh, jump over to Impact Wrestling or appear in Impact Wrestling. There isn't a talent share. This is something exclusive to EC3. So, as I mentioned, there doesn't appear to be any form of a working relationship between Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. This is something that EC3 has been able to do and make for himself. This is outside the parameters of Impact and Ring of Honor for the rest of their rosters. This is just for EC3, which, good for him. I mean, it shows the... The amount of demand that EC3 is in, it shows the star level that he has. It shows that multiple companies are interested in him. And if during a pandemic, he's managed to get himself a deal where he can work for multiple big companies in North America, then you have to you have to credit him. Fair play, because that's a difficult deal to pull off anyway, especially during a pandemic. So it's something that EC3 has been able to make for himself. And I think this means that the EC3 character in Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor, while they may have similarities, he's going to be one thing in in Ring of Honor and he's going to be another thing in Impact Wrestling. I think that's the way that this is going to go. I think the best way to look at this, because if you want to look at similar situations when it comes to pro wrestlers working for multiple companies at the same time, I think the best way to look at this is similar to what MJF had with MLW and AEW. Before MJF was with AEW, MJF was with MLW, Major League Wrestling, and a major player on MLW Fusion and on their programming and all over their events. However, then he gets started with AEW, right? He's involved with AEW at Double or Nothing in 2019, and the rest is history. But at the same time, he was still under contract with MLW. So what he did, he managed to work out a deal with MLW whereby he was able to compete with AEW, be on AEW pay-per-view events, be on AEW Dynamite every week. But he was still able to make his MLW dates. He was still appearing on Fusion and at the television tapings and any MLW event that he was contracted to. But he had signed a deal with MLW first. Now, eventually, his MLW contract expired and now he's exclusive to AEW. But the reason I bring that up, because the MJF and MLW wasn't related to the MJF and AEW. Yes, they were similar characters. He plays a similar character wherever he is. But they was it wasn't exactly the same. He didn't bring any storylines or attitudes that he had in AEW over with him to MLW. He had separate storylines and separate companies. They were separate entities, essentially. Another way of looking at it is that you've got Chris Pratt, right? Famous actor. He can be in two films at the same time, but they're different characters. He can be Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy film for Marvel in the MCU. And then the other film, he can be in Jurassic Park, or whatever that Jurassic World film that he's in. It's the same guy. It's the same actor. And I hate to call professional wrestlers actors because they're not. They're professional wrestlers. But the idea there and the concept is there. You can be two different characters on two different shows at the same time if they're completely unrelated. So I think that's going to be the deal here with EC3 in ROH and Impact Wrestling. Same guy, two different films, and two different characters. That's the same for EC3 now in Impact and ROH. Different shows, different storylines, different characters. I doubt they'll overlap, maybe very, very slightly, but I doubt it. And also noted in these reports, which I think is quite interesting, is that the agreement with Impact Wrestling is only a short-term deal. Many had assumed that when EC3 returned to Impact Wrestling back at Slammiversary in July, many people thought that this was similar to the Good Brothers, similar to the the deal that Eric Young has just signed with Impact Wrestling, whereby it was a two-year deal. That isn't the case. It's only a short-term deal. We know it's not exclusive. So it's a very open deal that EC3 has of Impact Wrestling right now. Potentially, potentially, this deal could only go to Bound for Glory in October. I mentioned that he's in a feud with Moose. He hasn't had any actual matches on Impact Wrestling as of yet. His first and last match maybe could be against Moose at Bound for Glory. 
He's openly spoke about that he's a free agent, that he hasn't signed a, a big deal with Impact Wrestling or he hasn't actually signed a deal at all with Impact Wrestling. Maybe that's what he means. Maybe he means that he's got an agreement, a short-term agreement, in the same way that he's got an agreement with Ring of Honor. So there's no long-term exclusive deals here to be signed by EC3. Now, if he's only contracted until October or to the end of the year for Bound for Glory, this opens up a lot of potential for EC3 to work with other companies. This opens the door up to working with AEW. Now, EC3, I mentioned about him doing these social media vignettes and promos during his 90-day non-compete clause. He did one on Ring of Honor. He got in a feud with Moose on social media, but he also did one of those Control Your Narrative videos about AEW. He dropped in a lot of AEW All Elite Wrestling puns, talked about the inner circle, inner circle easy for me to say, talked about the Khan, the Kong, talked about... Kenny Omega and other AEW wrestlers so I wouldn't close the door completely on EC3 working with AEW anytime soon the fact that he's working for Impact and Ring of Honor at the same time suggests to me that he could potentially work for AEW the National Wrestling Alliance NWA or New Japan in the future now previously I said that was unlikely because that was back in July and these companies apart from AEW they weren't running shows now all of these pro wrestling promotions are kind of back up and running again you got Ring of Honor they're doing TV tapings New Japan they're hosting shows over in the United States and in Japan so if he wants to work a show in the United States I'm sure they would happily have him if he wants to go to Japan he has to fly over and self-isolate and quarantine for two weeks we've just seen the likes of Will Ospreay go back over to Japan he's going to be competing in the G1 so there's options more and more now more options are opening up when it comes to pro wrestling because these major promotions previously that had shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic are now aware of what it takes to run the shows they're getting used to not doing it with any fans they're finding ways to do it that ensure that their talent and employees are safe MLW has opened up and started plans for their restart coming soon so now and I mentioned NWA there as well. Obviously, they're hosting their weekly pay-per-views on Fight TV. So now you've got the likes of AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, NWA, New Japan, and other select independent shows that are running as well. There's a lot of a lot of promotions now that are back up and running or are planning to anyway, along with, as I mentioned, MLW there too. So he could go anywhere. He could absolutely go anywhere because his deals with Ring of Honor, with Impact Wrestling, they're not exclusive. And as long as there's no creative conflict, he can basically go anywhere he pleases. I wouldn't be surprised if EC3 shows up on the first NWA pay-per-view on Fight TV. We know that EC3 does have a very good relationship with Billy Corgan. We know that Billy Corgan has been utilizing those relationships that he has made in Impact Wrestling when he was uh, a prominent figure there. Mike Bennett is going to be facing Nick Aldis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship on the first pay-per-view. Mike Bennett, another one of those guys that has a great relationship with Billy Corgan. So I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if EC3 does show up on that event. Um, potentially he could get in a feud with Nick Aldis over the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. That seems to me like something that EC3 would do. At the moment, it's very obvious he doesn't want to be tied down. He doesn't want to be tied down to any one company. He's not going to sign any exclusivity deal yet. Maybe that's why he hasn't gone to AEW yet. Because once he goes to AEW, the only place he can realistically go during that period of time is New Japan. We know that a lot of AEW talents do have clauses where they can wrestle for New Japan. Could EC3 get that? I'm not sure if he would be able to get that. That's at the level of the likes of Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, and Brody Lee. But perhaps, perhaps EC3 could get that too. So I think EC3 is doing a Cody Rhodes of 2016. I think he's doing the rounds. He's appearing in Impact. He's appearing in Ring of Honor. I think he'll appear in NWA and maybe he'll appear in New Japan too at those California shows. And then eventually maybe he'll go to AEW too. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see EC3 in the coming weeks pop up in a, quite a few places. But it's very interesting for EC3. And it confirms that he's not just going to be an impact for sure. And maybe he won't be an impact wrestling for the foreseeable future like we believed in the first place. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on it? this news that EC3 has signed short-term deals with both Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling? But there is, neither deal is exclusive and there's no creative conflict. 
week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys on this channel. If you've enjoyed the video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. Really just helps out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds here on YouTube. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.